Hi there, and welcome once again to In Search of Christianity, brought to you by Bible Talk. Here today, being back in Orlando, Florida, after a few weeks on the road. So we're glad that you can be with us, join us. Yes, we are. And we can gather in the name of the Lord, in the precious, wonderful name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. And uh, that we seek to hear clearly from Him. Thank you, Father. That we might be more like Him and filled with faith. So I'm going to ask Alice, before we start, if you will ask God's blessing Amen. upon our time. Thank you, Lord God. Father, we just praise you. We thank you. And we are so thankful for the opportunity to be able to share your word with so many. And Lord, we just pray that the word will go into our hearts and do the work that you want it to do. Amen. Amen. Well, what the Lord has put on my heart for this particular program, the 25th in this uh, series, is holiness. <clears throat> I think all too often that's that's understated or or misstated and I think we need to take a look at it because it, it is indeed a terribly terribly important topic so to talk about holiness I'm going to start with this the Lord doesn't call us to be good no what he calls us to do good yes for God's glory remember Jesus said in the Sermon on the Mount let your light shine before men in such a way that they may see your good works and glorify your Father who is in heaven. Matthew 5, 16. Mm -hmm. He doesn't call us to be good. Remember, he said that no, no one is good. No, no man is good, right? That's right. But he does call us to be holy. Separate. Well, he says, uh, this is what Peter wrote, mm -hmm. right? First Peter 1, chapter 1. He says, because it is written, you shall be holy for I am holy. God calls us to be holy. Holiness, it's about consecration, sanctification, mm -hmm. and separation. The Lord sets us apart and sanctifies us for his use and his calling. I'm going to start with this because it's the first place actually that the word holy is used in the Bible. All right? You know the account when Moses was out in the wilderness after leaving Egypt, and he's out there tending his father-in-law's flock, right? Mm -hmm. And all of a sudden he sees a bush on fire, uh, on fire, but yes. not being consumed. Right. So Moses said, I must turn aside now and see this marvelous sight, why the bush is not burned up. When the Lord saw that he turned aside to look, God called to him from the midst of the bush and said, Moses, Moses, mm -hmm. And he said, here I am. Then he said, do not come near here. Remove your sandals from your feet. For the place which you, on which you are standing is holy ground. He said also, I am the God of your father, the God of Abraham, the God of Isaac, and the God of Jacob. Right? That's in Exodus chapter 3. Holiness. It is about the awesome presence of, God. of our holy God. Mm -hmm. A presence that even made the dirt Moses stood upon holy. Mm -hmm. So get it in your head right off the bat. God can make you holy. If he can make dirt holy, he can make yes. you holy. He can make me holy, all right? But remember, it was that burning bush. Mm -hmm. Because I'm going to tell you this now, and this will be a recurring thing through here. Holiness is about fire. That's fire. Fire. Uh, we've been to a lot of places. We, you know, I'm sure you know by now. We've gotten the opportunity to travel to a lot of pe places, visit with a lot of Christians, or many, many different places. We've run across, of course, we've run across "quote unquote" holiness churches, and mm -hmm. and you know, it's, it is like I said, it's not only important; it is imperative that you have a desire to be holy. But changing your actions will not make you holy. But being holy will change your actions. Yes. Okay? Yes. That makes sense to you? I'm talking to our audience out <laughs> on, uh, here. Our, our dear brother Mark is over there. He's here. For our God, it says in Hebrews chapter 12, or uh, yeah, chapter 12, our God is a consuming fire. Mm -hmm. All right? So this is all, if it's about the presence of God, 
and it is about the fact that our God is a consuming fire. Now, the fire did not consume the bush. No, it didn't. But I'm going to promise you that that fire consumed Moses. Yes. Hallelujah. In all good ways. Do you want to be holy? I, I pray that you do. Paul wrote to the church at Rome, and he said, Therefore I urge you, brethren, by the mercies of God, to present your bodies a living and holy sacrifice, acceptable to God, which is your spiritual service of worship. Romans 12.1. You've got to present him yourself as a living and holy sacrifice. Mm -hmm. Okay? This should come with a warning label. Because you know the sacrifice doesn't survive. Or the offering, what's offered, doesn't, sac doesn't survive the sacrifice. <laughs> but you will. Except for the fact that you die in the process. For I have died and my life is hidden in Christ Jesus with God, right? So, I'm, I want to talk about what holiness is. And I'm going to, I want to say two things from the Sermon on the Mount, because I've said all along that the Sermon on the Mount is true Christianity. All right? This is the central teaching, the core teaching of what our faith is about. And Jesus said, Blessed are the pure in heart. For they shall see God. Matthew 5 8. And he went on to say, Therefore you are to be perfect as your heavenly Father is perfect. Matthew 5 48. Now you may be sitting there and saying, Well, I'm not perfect. You know what? I'm not perfect. But I will tell you this I am being perfected. Is that something that we can strive for? It's something that you can surrender to. Mm -hmm. Okay. So we'll get into this a little bit, okay? Mm -hmm. Because sanctification, which is a you know one of the parts of holiness, all right? Sanctification is about purity. Yes, that's right. All right? Mm -hmm. And pure means free from contamination, free from foreign or inappropriate elements. This is what the Random House Dictionary says. That's a dictionary. That's not my definition. That's a dictionary definition, right? Moses said, "Give ear, O heavens, and let me speak." And let the earth hear the words of my mouth. Let my teaching drop as the rain and my speech distill as the dew, as the droplets on the fresh grass and as the showers on the earth. For I proclaim the name of the Lord, ascribe greatness to our God. The rock, his work is perfect. Okay, that's, I'm reading from uh, De Deuteronomy 32, and that's in verses 1 through 4. The rock, our God, his work is perfect. You know, it says that we are the work of his hands. Amen. That's right. So, yes, you can achieve perfection because it is not you doing it, but it is him at work in you. All right? He, as Jesus said very clearly, he is building his church. A holy nation, like Peter said in 1 Peter 2 9, right? We are a chosen generation, a royal race, a holy nation, right? <clears throat> that he might present to himself the church in all her glory, having no spot or wrinkle or any such thing, but that she would be holy and blameless. Ephesians 5, 27. Mm -hmm. This is what Christ is coming back for, a bride without spot or wrinkle, a church that is perfect and pure. Mm -hmm. He'll do that work in us. We need to surrender to it, be willing in his hands, willing clay in the hands of the potter. Right? And I've talked about this on uh, a number of the previous programs. That we, like Lazarus, raised from the dead, hallelujah, by, the, by his name being called by Jesus Christ, which is the same way you were raised from the dead, right? Mm -hmm. And yet he came out of that tomb and into new life, bound with the garments of death. Yes. Okay? Mm -hmm. This is what the process is is putting off, because I want to tell you something. Inside, when you were born again, and if you haven't been born again, you're not a Christian. Bada bing, bada boom. It's that simple. It is. Jesus said to Nicodemus, you must, must be born again. Okay, I'm not going to distract myself this time. Okay. That's another Bible study. Well, <laughs> but he, it, he needed to be unbound. Yes. This is the first thing that Jesus says to the people around him. Unbind him, right? Mm -hmm. God has a process 
to bring us from glory to glory, mm -hmm. to make us conform to the image of his son, yes. the perfect, pure, blameless, flawless lamb of God. Mm -hmm. He is going to remove every imperfection. That is him working the process of holiness in our lives. Okay? So it just came to me, there's about the, the trials and the tribulations that we go through. It's the refiner's fire. So that's that we're, like when you said that we have to surrender. So we have to become that sacrifice so we can become holy. Alice has it exactly right. So that's what I was going to talk about. Oh, that's it. We finished. God bless you. <laughs> no, because that, that is exactly right. You know, Jesus, we are to be disciples of the Lord Jesus Christ. That's right. How can you... How can you extract the word? How can you remove discipline from disciple? It's the same word, yeah. right? It's the same word. And here's what the word of God says. Today, New Testament times, all right? For those whom the Lord loves, he disciplines. And he scourges every son whom he receives. And then he says, there in Hebrews chapter 12 is what I'm reading for, from. He disciplines us. For our good, so that we may share his holiness. Amen. Hebrews 12, I read verses 6 and 10. You want to be holy? God does it with his discipline that we might share in his holiness, okay? Think about it. David, truly a man after God's own heart, prayed for discipline and that he would not reject it when it came. He said, let the righteous smite me in kindness and reprove me. It is oil upon the head. Do not let my head refuse it. That's in Psalm 141. He's praying that God would use the brothers and sisters to bring discipline into his life, to reprove him, to correct him, and that his head wouldn't refuse it. Because you want to know something? In the natural, you don't want it. In the natural, you want to put it aside, right? The other thing is it's about purity, right? And David prayed for purity. Yes. Was that not what he was praying for? When he said, yes, hide your face from my sins and blot out all my iniquities. Mm -hmm. Create in me a clean heart, O God, and renew a steadfast spirit within me. Psalm 51. Yes. That's exactly what he was praying for. He was praying for a, a purity in his life mm -hmm. that he knew he couldn't achieve on his own. Mm -hmm. Hallelujah. God is good. We are his sheep. The sheep of his pasture, we are the work of his hands. We are the clay in the hands of a potter mm -hmm. who is at work in our lives. That ought to give you cause to give thanks every, every morning when you wake up. That's right. Yeah. You see, God is in control. Satan is nothing more than a tool in the hand of God. Mm -hmm. A stupid one. He's been defeated. He's been disarmed. That's what it says in the Word of God. So God, God uses him. You know, that's why it says in Isaiah, Prophet Isaiah, and this is, you know, we're talking about 750 years before the birth of Jesus into the world. Mm -hmm. God said, devise a plan, but it will be thwarted. Right. State a proposal, but it will not stand, for God is with us. Oh, that's yeah. speaking to the enemy. Yes, go ahead, make your plans. Amen. Go ahead, devise a plan. Go ahead, go on the attack. You want to know something? I know the Word of God. I believe the Word of God. And I know, that's what it says, we know that all things work together for good for those who love the Lord and are called according to His purpose. And we know, it says that we know God causes. Causes it. God Absolutely. causes it. When we know, when you Absolutely. realize that, that all things work together for good. Absolutely. So Not, not anything that we can do. God causes it. God does it. Yes. And if God is for us, who can be against yes. us? Right? Amen. Think of, think, I mean, this is clear through all the Scripture. From, I mean, from the beginning, from Genesis to Revelation, it's clear. Think of what Joseph, Joseph, right? Mm -hmm. When he was in Egypt. Yeah. Now, how did he get to Egypt? Oh. His brothers threw him down a well, took him out of the well, hallelujah, sold him off into slavery. That's how he got to Egypt. Mercy, mercy. And, but then, years later, when his brothers encountered Joseph, now elevated. Yes, God in, lifted in, him up. Right? But here's what mm -hmm. Joseph said to his brothers. He said, as for you, you meant evil against me, but God meant it for good in order to bring about this present result to preserve many people alive. Genesis 50, 20. Yes. Now, I want you to see something here. I said that it's about God's purpose. Yes. It's about sanctification. It's about 
Holiness is about being set aside, being consecrated for God's use. God caused or allowed. You can put either word you want there, but God is the root cause of all that goes on. He's in control. He allowed all of this to happen in Joseph's life to be used by God for his purpose. Was And that purpose was to preserve many people alive. A, foresha- a blessing to the people yes. then, and a foreshadowing of Christ, mm-hmm. our brother. Yes. And so I was saying, holiness is about being consecrated and set apart. Joseph was indeed mm-hmm. set apart for God's purpose. Yes. And it is, did I say this yet? Mm-hmm. It's about fire. fire. <laughs> I think I said that. Yes. Fire. Paul knew that. Listen, this doesn't, it, remember, it comes through the discipline. Mm-hmm. The scourging, yes. right? The scourging that God is in control of. Paul knew it. He said, and not only this, but we also exult in our tribulations, knowing that tribulation brings about perseverance, perseverance, proven character, and proven character hope. I have hope in God's work in my life, mm-hmm. in God's deliverance yes. in my life. Yes. I trust in God. Paul knew it. Hallelujah. James knew it. James, when he said, consider it all joy, my brethren, when you encounter various trials, knowing that the testing of your faith produces endurance. And let endurance have its perfect result, so that you may be perfect and complete, lacking in nothing. This is God's process of perfecting us, bringing us to that place of purity and holiness. The trials, the tribulations. Peter knew it. Peter said, Beloved, do not be surprised at the fiery ordeal Is among that you. Word again? Fire. Fire. <laughs> Don't be surprised at the fiery ordeal among you, which comes upon you for your testing, as though some strange thing were happening to you. That's fire holiness. again. That's right. That's because holiness. this is God's process of bringing us to that place of true holiness. Mm-hmm. And by the way, I have to do a little aside here. Okay. I have mentioned a couple of times. Um, Talk about purity, talk about holiness, talk about... There is is a thing called a Bible out there. Mm -hmm. I'm going to say it. It's a message. It's not a message Bible. It's it's a message thing. Because it is not the Word of God. Bada bing, bada boom. And I want you to to hear this. This is one of hundreds of examples that I could give you. The message using that verse where Peter said, You know, beloved, do not be surprised at the fiery ordeal among you. The message says, when life gets really difficult, don't jump to the conclusion that God isn't on the job. Now, among all of the translations that I've looked at in English, it talks about the fire, except for one, and that's this, this message thing. He found a way to improve on God's word. Let me tell you something. You better be prayerful. And when I say prayerful, you know, I'm not asking you to take my word for anything. But have a little chat with the Holy Spirit. Have a little talk with Jesus and ask him, make sure that what you are hearing, what you are receiving is the true word of God. Okay. That message book needs to be in the fire. Well, I think it came from the fire, but that's another story. Okay. And listen, I know that it's a respected Bible using a lot of, or thing, using a lot of, a lot of places by a lot of major churches. I am telling you that it is not the Word of God. No, it is not. Okay. Ask the Lord. Don't take my word. And like I said, yes, it is about fire. Think about this. God called Job blameless and upright. But obviously, there was something in his life Mm -hmm. that the Lord needed to remove to purify him. Now, think about He's blameless and upright, mm-hmm. right? A righteous man in us. Mm. But he said, Job 3.25, he said, For what I fear comes upon me, and what I dread befalls me. You see, fear is the opposite of faith. That's right. It's a spiritual disease that causes distraction, that makes us take our eyes off of Jesus to focus on the problem. And without faith, it is impossible to please God. Hebrews 11, 6. That's what fear does. Okay? 
We are fearfully and wonderfully made. That's what it says in Psalm 139. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Mm. And in God's wonderful design, there is a plan to fight disease, to fight disease within us. Mm -hmm. Fever. That's a fire. Fire. <laughs> now, right. it's, it's interesting because most people react, well, to, to fever as if it's a disease. Mm -hmm. Okay. Listen to what That's I'm telling you. And, and test what I say. Go, go, do your own searches. Talk to the Lord. Talk to your doctor. Mm. Do this, right? Fever is not a disease. No. It's a cure. That's right. It's a battle. It's a cure. Mm -hmm. This is what God does. He causes a fire inside of us to heal us from that disease. I want to read you a couple of quotes. I just, because I, you know, I, I, I understand that most people think, what? wait a minute, wait a minute, that's not, well, okay. I'm going to read you something from the American Academy of Pediatrics. And of course, here now it's talking about children. Mm -hmm. It says, according to the AAP, a fever can help your child's body fight off infection. Mm -hmm. Many illness causing microbes do best at the body's normal temperature. A fever raises the temperature beyond which certain microbes need to reproduce. A fever also kicks your child's immune system into high gear, spurring the rapid production of bug-clobbering white blood cells. A small but growing body of research showing that let a fe letting a fever run its course may reduce the length and severity of such illnesses as colds and flu. Amen. We're fearfully and wonderfully made. Oh, yes. Okay? It's amazing. A fever is a fire inside yes. that, that can heal. Okay? Oh, yeah. You better have a fire in your belly. Okay. And uh, I have one other quote, and this is from a renowned doctor. His name was Dr. Joseph Mercola. And he said, let's first consider the functions of a fever and how it works. Mm -hmm. The two functions of a fever are to stimulate the immune system, okay. to create an inhospitable environment for invading organisms. That is, to turn up the heat high enough that the invading microbes can't live. Amazing. Yes, fever is not the disease. Fever is the cure. Fire is the cure. Do you have sin in your life? Fire is the cure. Job knew that a good, godly fever would, would cure what ailed him. Yes. Which is why he said, But he, the Lord, knows the way I take. When he has tried me, I shall come forth as gold. Job 23.10 you know what trying is that you're talking about? Gold. They heat gold up to it becomes molten. That's right. Fire. And when fire. gold becomes molten, the imperfections, the impurities, the things that are bad, float to the surface where they can be scraped off. It's that's re that's refiner's fire. That's okay? Refiner. It's so amazing. Gold is heat, like I said, mm. until it's molten. It takes fire, right? This is the process that produces fine gold. But the very finest gold can also be found in the book of Job. Okay. Yes. In Job 22, he said, If you return to the Almighty, you will be restored. If you remove unrighteousness far from your tent and place your gold in the dust and the gold of Ophir among the stones of the brooks, then the Almighty will be your gold and choice silver to you. Hallelujah. You know, we keep seeking the things of the world and think that they're the answer. God says, toss him in the dust. He'll give you what's better. And what's better is him. You know, the gold of Ophir is mentioned many, many times in scriptures. And it's known for its value. Okay? It was, it was known throughout the, the ancient world. But it can't compare to the gold, the treasure, that is our God. So Job said, as for me, I know that my Redeemer lives. And at the last, he will take his stand upon the earth. Job 19.25. That's the result of being refined. It gives you that focus, that confidence, that hope. Isn't that what we talked about in Romans? Right. That hope in the presence of God coming. Want to know about the presence of God? Want to know about fire? I have one. Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. When they were confronted with the most powerful force in the world at the time, Nebuchadnezzar and the, and the forces of Babylon, and they said, bow down and worship. This, you know what they said? No. No. They would not bend to the evil. 
So Nebuchadnezzar, in a, a, I was going to say a fit of rage, that is right, a fit of rage, had that fire, the furnace, heated up seven times higher. Fire! And had them tossed in. It was so hot that the, the people who went to throw them in burned up. But Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego marched around in that fire, but not alone, hallelujah. They marched around with the living God. They looked in, and there were four marching around in that furnace. And that should just show us that God will never leave us nor forsake us. No matter what we're going through, he's there with us. But it should also show us, and this is why Peter said we, we exult in it. This is why James said we consider it joy, mm -hmm. is because you can't be afraid of the fire. That's right. The fire may very well be the place where you have the most incredible experiences right. of the presence of God. Amen. Amen. That's where, when you can call out and say, He is my deliverer, Amen. and experience the deliverance of God in these trials and tribulations. Because you want to know something at the That's end of the day, you, sure. you know, we can, we can do these shows, you can put ads in the newspaper, you can do all you want. But it says that the saints overcame. In Revelation, it says that the saints overcame by the blood of the Lamb and the word of their testimony. Your testimony is when you can proclaim how God has delivered you from the trials, from the, from the persecutions, from the fire. And that is the truth. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Ooh. Ah. It's like the potter and the clay. You know, this is used a couple times in the Old Testament. It's used in the New Testament. God is the potter, we're the clay. Hallelujah. When it's finally molded and just the way the Lord wants it, when it's all done, all finished, all looking perfectly just the way he wants it, you know what happens then? Into the fire. Into the kiln. That's right. When you to think be it's finished over. and perfected. That's right. Praise God. Amen. You will encounter the Lord God Almighty, his glory and his magnificence, in the fire. Yes. Well, yes. hallelujah. I want to join with the four living creatures in the fourth chapter of the book of Revelations. Mm -hmm. And I want to pray and cry out, holy, holy, holy mm -hmm. is the Lord God, the Almighty, who was and who is and who is to come. Thank you, Jesus. I want to join with the 24 elders mm -hmm. in the fourth chapter of the book of Revelation. Crying out, worthy are you, our Lord and our God, to receive glory and honor and power. For you created all things, and because of your will, they existed and were created. It is about fire. It is about trusting God as you encounter that fire. It is about that joy, knowing that he is in control of whatever situation that you are encountering right now. Right. And that he will deliver you for the glory of his name. And to bring you to that place of true holiness. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah, Father. I just, I, I thank God. Mm -hmm. Listen, he still uses the foolish to shame the wisdom of the wise. He can still use us in our weakness to shame the strong. Mm -hmm. He has called you by name. He has called you out. He has separated you from the world. He has already made you holy to serve his purpose. Rejoice, give thanks, and praise the living God. Amen. God bless you, and until next time, see you then. On a hill far away Stood an old rugged cross The emblem of suffering and shame For a world of lost sinners